All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Erin Gallagher. I'm the Chair of Acquisitions and Collection Services at the University of Florida. But today I'm wearing my interviewer hat um, on behalf of the Charleston Conference, and I am really excited to be interviewing Maggie and Georgette uh, as part of the Charleston Leadership Interview Series. And I'm particularly excited because I love talking to uh, early career librarians um, and people who perhaps are a bit new to the Charleston Conference as well. So Maggie and Georgette, if you wouldn't mind just by starting out by introducing yourselves and then also sharing a bit about each of your backgrounds, including your paths to librarianship. Um, so my name is Maggie Mahoney. I'm a business liaison librarian at the Pennsylvania State University Trier Business Library, which is located on the University Park campus. I work closely with the um, Smeal College of Business Department of Accounting and the Smeal Center for Sustainable Business. So those are my two areas that I support. And I have been here for at Penn State for about, oh gosh, 14 months, 15 months. Still feel pretty new here. And this was my first job after finishing library school at the University of Washington. Wonderful. Thanks, Maggie. How about you, Georgette? Um, yeah, so I'm also at University Park, Penn State University Park, um, and I am a communications and business liaison librarian. So my primary areas of um, liaison are to the College of Communications, uh, particularly with advertising and PR and also telecommunications. But I also help out with the Smill College of Business um, for larger classes whenever there's just needing the extra, the extra help as well. Um, and this is also my first career or my first job as a librarian. It's my seventh month, I think, in this role. And um, prior to that, I, I just came out of my MLIS and before that I had a degree in um, marketing, a master's in marketing. So also very new to everything. That's new and exciting. So how did you both fall or choose or get into librarianship? Ooh. So I, let's see, in undergrad, I started working as a writing tutor at the University of Vermont Writing Center. And that was where I first got the idea that I could sort of make a career out of research support and supporting students learning and writing and research, kind of all that bundled together was really appealing to me. So I was like, okay, I like the idea of being involved in higher ed. I don't necessarily think I want to teach or get my PhD, but the MLIS seemed like a really good pathway to make a career out of this, um, this interest in this skill of mine. So I was, you know, <laughs> applying to some different library school programs, ended up um, committing to the University of Washington, and then I was like, oh, man, I have to pay for this degree. And so I was applying to some different graduate assistantships at uh, UW. And then I was offered one working as a graduate reference and instruction assistant at the University of Washington Foster Business Library. And that was just like such a such a great experience. I had a really, really thoughtful team that I was working with, a team of librarians that were really intentional about introducing me to all aspects of uh, librarianship and business librarianship in particular. And I found myself really drawn towards the discipline. I'm, you know, I sort of like the the creativity and the competitiveness and the fast paced environment of business, especially in initiatives around like sustainable enterprise. That's something that I think is really, really exciting to support student research with. And so then, you know, I'm continuing in this, um, you know, graduate assistant positionship at UW, finishing up my degree, applying to jobs just all over, um, you know, especially <laughs> going to library school during the pandemic. I think it was a, a a hard time to be in school, but also a hard time to be in higher ed as so many universities were experiencing um, layoffs and hiring freezes. So when this position came, you know, I saw a posting for this position at Penn State. I was like, you know, I'll apply to this one along with like 20 other ones. We'll see what happens. And then the, um, the more I learned about 
Penn State, the more excited I was to have the opportunity to work there. Our um, our boss, Diane Zabel, who is head of the Schreier Business Library, has a really high profile among um, business librarians and also a high profile within the library system at Penn State. So when I had told my boss at UW that you know, I was applying to this job at Penn State. He was like, oh, Diane's able, like she's someone that would be great to work for. So I was really, um, really excited to be offered this job and to also land in a business library with lots of other business librarians. I think, you know, to be coming into this position as my first job and to have such a, uh, such a high caliber team to join has really helped make the transition into my, my um, first job as a librarian that much easier. So I'm um, happy to be here. And then we were really excited to have Georgette join us a few months after I started. Great. So Georgette, how about you? How did you end up where you are? Yeah. So, um, well, first, both of my parents always worked in academia. So they worked at Penn State. And so I ended up going to Penn State during my undergrad as well. And I always was attracted to academia in some way, but in similar fashion as Maggie, I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do a PhD really. Um, kind of just generally unsure about my my plans. So I worked um, as a part-time student worker during my entire undergraduate career. Then I went off for a year to get my first master's degree. And then I came back and started working at the library again um, in a similar position to the one that I had when I was a student. And during that time, I realized like, clearly I love it here because I came straight back and I just feel most comfortable in this type of environment. So I think the best option for me would be to attend library school. And I think that's the career path that I would enjoy the most, um, especially because there are so many diverse job responsibilities you get to do as a librarian. Um, and I feel like it's not never something, every day is different. So that's what most attracted me to that type of career. So um, I continued working in that part-time role as I completed my library degree. And then um, I was sort of familiar with the different areas of library at Penn State, though there really is such like a jump, in my opinion, from working um, a certain job, like working at a welcome desk and then understanding what librarians do. So I wasn't completely understanding every single role that was available to me. Um, and I wasn't exactly sure what type of job I wanted to get straight out of library school, um, though I knew I wanted it to be in academia at an academic library. And then when this job posted, which was really quickly as I uh, posted, like really soon after I finished, I finished in December um 2021 this is 2022 yes and then it was posted um right away or actually a little bit before I graduated and I thought you know I have a degree in, in business and I have like an affinity towards business and marketing and this was a communications um position kind of associated with uh degrees and um student majors that are associated with marketing and the things that I had studied so I thought this may be like the perfect role to jump into so I felt really lucky that I was accepted into it um and again like I said I kind of knew I knew a bit about the librarians who worked in the business library already so I, I had a feeling it was going to be a really like strong and comforting environment and that ended up being that way um it's always felt like this is just it's just a really nice tight-knit um library and we have a good amount of librarians here in our department there's I think seven of us in total so that's just like a great amount of support right away um so yeah that's my path into the job well, I can relate to a lot of what y'all are saying, especially um, applying to so many places out of library school. I applied to 85 library jobs when I was wow. uh, out of library school back in uh, 2011. And yeah, I heard from three of them. So I was, uh, it was it was a tough time back then, too. Uh, but also I can relate to the whole concept of I loved academia and didn't want to leave it. And so I knew that. I wanted to do something um, in the academic sphere. And yeah, what what better place to welcome us warmly than the library? So I want to dig in a little bit more on uh, your paths here because you both had a very unique and sort of unexpected situation where you left library school and entered the career field in the, you know, during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, which of course it's not like we are scot-free in this in any way. Um, but, you know, things were certainly at a um, flashpoint when you all were trying to make this career transition. So can you share more about what it was like to, to make the transition at that time? And especially if there were any silver linings? Yeah, I mean, it was a really, a really stressful time for everyone. And I think, you know, we're, we're still 
experiencing the pandemic and everyone's experience in the pandemic is so different and so shaped by the privileges that you have as you, you know, are a, a student or you're working or you're in a position where you're caring for family or friends. So the, you know, no one had the the same pandemic experiences, but I mean, it was really difficult to be a student, especially if you were, um, you know, someone who had committed to seeing your degree out in person. You know, I, when I was applying to some library schools, some library schools offered in-person and online programs. And I deliberately chose an in-person program because I knew that that's uh, a style of learning that would really you know, it was one that I had responded to really positively in undergrad. I had some bad experiences in online classes when I was in undergrad. So when I was at the, when I was making a decision to invest in my career by attending library school, I was like, okay, I want to do this in a way that's going to serve me best as a learner. So I want to do it in person. And then the, the transition to online learning was really difficult um, and then, you know, just coupled with the the stress and uncertainty of the pandemic, concern for, you know, my family, my friends, my community, as, you know, everyone is navigating this huge unknown. And that was, it was really stressful. And it, at times it felt like the, um, the events surrounding the pandemic detract, detracted from my ability to be the best student that I could be. I was really um, really nervous that I would exit library school unqualified for the kind of job that I was looking for because I hadn't been able to have those same, um, you know, in-person experiences that I thought would have really, really prepared me well for a library career. My, my uh, job as a graduate assistant did transition to a remote position, and I was able to continue to, you know, work and learn as a business librarian, but I was worried that employers would be looking for, um, you know, the same kind of skills that they were looking for in, say, spring of 2019 instead of spring of 2021. But I did find that as I was applying to positions and in conversations with um, potential employers in interviews, you know, just sort of back and forths with all of these different schools that I was talking to, that schools were really interested in the, the skill sets that people had gained during the pandemic, that especially support for online instruction and online reference skills that I was able to gain during the pandemic, both as a uh, graduate assistant and then also my own experiences as a student encountering online learning and looking for uh, research help myself as a student, that those perspectives were something that employers did really value in the sort of transition from library science student to, um, you know, <laughs> librarian. So I think the, the silver lining, which sometimes feels a little a little hard to talk about considering how much hardship there was during the pandemic and how much hardship there continues to be as people sort of cobble their lives back together is that I think uh, the kind of employer that you're going to want to work for is going to really value the skills that you will have gained during the pandemic. So especially support for remote instruction and reference, I think those are, um, you know, a silver lining <laughs> if you want to put it like that. That's really enlightening, Maggie. Thank you. Georgette, how about you? Yeah, I think I would echo a lot of what Maggie said about her experience, though, in terms of how we entered the degree program. Um, it was a bit different because I started my library degree in July um, after the March when which the pandemic kind of started or whenever you would say it, it began technically. Um, and so I already knew that my degree would have to be remote and, and online. And I also had some of some strange or not the best experiences with <laughs> online classes as an undergrad student. So I was a little bit worried about how would like, the platforms even work and how would we actually be um, engaged enough to go through this type of program. And, and the end up clearly worked out and I really enjoyed my degree, but there was also worry about, um, there was like internship requirements or kind of these, uh, previously there were like on-site requirements that you'd have to attend at least once a year that had to be shifted. And for these type of things, I was concerned about um, how I would get that experience that was required not only to graduate, but also when you do look for jobs, a lot of them do say 
um, some type of like an academic experience or working in an academic library in some capacity. And though I was working at one um, during the time, again, I was kind of, not, I guess, worried in a way that the experience that shifted into like an online experience working remotely, not directly within the library would have some type of impact on, on what employers would think about the experience that I did have. So that was a concern, but similar to what Maggie said, and also um, adding something else, I do find that in the end people have become much more accommodating and flexible and want to know what you you learned during that experience and how you can take those learnings and um, apply it to your current role and considering that we still have a lot of remote practices um, still mm -hmm. now in our positions, how you can take what you learned and how you approach remote teaching or remote meetings or anything like that um, as your position. But yeah, I think another silver lining is just kind of how attentive and accommodating people have become um, when situations arise that may be unexpected and whether it's something related to the pandemic or just like another personal life um, thing that may come up or just people being comfortable um, being around people again, anything like that, I think a lot of people have become much more flexible and accommodating and it's nice to work in that type of environment where you aren't afraid to say, you know, I'm not surely comfortable with this and can we work around it? And people are usually very kind about that. So I think that is another silver lining. That's great. I'm glad to hear that, you know, some kindness and empathy and flexibility have been outcomes. I've experienced that myself here at um, University of Florida. It's, it's we've all kind of um, had to broaden our horizons on, you know, what it means to be, quote unquote, a productive uh, member of our library community. And, and we'll have to get together and swap stories about online class experience. Sometimes I can tell you all I did my entire a library grad degree online, and this was in 2010, 2011, and I was going to Florida State, um, and I, luckily I lived there at the same time, so I also had an assistantship in the library, so I got to meet a lot of people that way, but I still will sometimes meet someone at a conference, and the name is really vaguely familiar, and then we realize, oh, we had all of our grad classes together, but we had no idea what each other looked like, you know, at that time, a lot of it was just like we're chatting <laughs> in the online classroom and uh, there wasn't much face-to-face -face interaction. So. <laughs> so what's now that you both, you know, landed squarely in uh, what sounds like a real dream team of a library, um, what's something that you're each currently working on that you're particularly proud of or excited about? Ooh, that's a good question. I was, there's a lot that I was thinking about that would be a good answer for this, but one that I am really excited to share is that I'm collaborating with one of my colleagues, um, Denise Wetzel. Uh, she's not in the business library, but she's a, a colleague that we work really closely with because her her area, you know, science is her sort of broad specialty as a librarian. So there is a good amount of overlap between us. Uh, we're working on a, a I guess, producing, if you will, a, a speaker series and a book club for, you know, sort of aimed at boosting, uh, boosting recognition of leadership skills among women and historically marginalized employees at the Penn State libraries. The, the sort of impetus for this was that a lot of, you know, libraries are a very uh, female dominated, very white, white dominated um, profession. And but even as you sort of work your way up through leadership positions in libraries, you'll notice that there is a lot of men in leadership positions in libraries that maybe is not necessarily a reflection of the proportion of genders uh, among all librarians. So we're like, all right, how do we how do we recognize and boost leadership skills and leadership um, competencies among women and among um, people of color, people of marginalized gender identity, all sorts of historically marginalized identities. So we're working on a speaker series and sort of a book club, and we're bringing in lots of different speakers uh, that are, you know, have really, really high positions of leadership at different libraries. And so sort of coordinating that programming has been a big, big undertaking, but we're really excited to um, be able to bring it to the Penn State libraries. That sounds so rewarding, Maggie, and also super, super needed. I don't know if this statistic, and in fact, this statistic is not still accurate, I'm sure. But when I started library school, I, I remember reading in one of my textbooks how 
it was something like 85% of folks in the library profession um, identified as women, but that was the same percentage of leadership positions being held by men. So like there were only about, you know, 15% of male identifying librarians, but they were holding um, almost the entirety of leadership positions in libraries. And I remember that being really uh, compelling for me to read at the time, but how about you, Georgette? Um, yeah, so one thing that I've been working on that's kind of manifesting in a couple of different formats is kind of thinking about students and their literacy or reading interests out um, related to business, but outside of maybe classrooms. So basically focusing on leisure reading and what other libraries around the country are doing in terms of leisure reading and what type of books they're collecting. Um, so I'm working on an article with one of my colleagues that's going to be looking at how other universities um, consider their business popular fiction titles and where they're how they're presenting that in their library, um, if they're advocating it to students or in their liaison areas. So that's one way that's manifesting, but I'm also trying to see if I can work with my liaison areas to start some type of book club and see if we can get an initiative or just try to understand what students in those liaison areas and majors are thinking about um, outside of their coursework, if they're actually interested in um, pursuing business research or reading outside of their student work um like as a as a hobby or anything on their own or what they're thinking about outside of the classroom so I'm trying to think about um other ways we can do that maybe some digital signage uh, promoting some popular business titles that come in through the library um so that's currently something I'm excited about and seeing how we can get the students more engaged with titles or anything um yeah outside of the classroom but what a great way to to you know highlight a love of reading and also to give students something to look forward to or think about beyond just having their faces buried in their you know classroom research i, I um as someone who's been an avid reader my whole life when i was in grad school in particular i just all i did was read stuff i didn't uh choose myself you know it was stuff that was sort of foisted upon me and uh, yeah any reminder that hey there's a whole world of leisure reading out here and it might do your your uh poor little brain some good to <laughs> you know, change gears. I think that's a really great effort. And also I had never really thought before about like business popular fiction or, you know, what, what that would entail. So that's yeah, interesting. So uh, switching gears a bit, taking things to the Charleston conference, I'm really interested in the presentation that y'all are going to be sharing this year at the conference. Um, and I, it's in part, it's because I believe that we really need more perspectives from early career, burgeoning um, library school grads, you know, folks who are, are just starting out in their careers, because if we don't make space, and in fact, Charleston was the first conference where I was given an opportunity to present, you know, as an early career librarian myself. And so I, um, that's one of the things I love about it is that I feel like we really make space for not just the, uh, the usual suspects on the, uh, the presentation tour. Um, so can you give us a little sneak peek of what you're going to be sharing in your presentation? Yeah, we were really excited to see that the, uh, there is an opportunity for librarians who are new to the profession to be featured the the little tag that you're using what was it like up and coming up and comers yep. yeah yeah we were so happy to see that and I think I'm also really interested to see the other presentations in that category just to see what um, what people new to the profession are thinking about and I think it is really nice to be able to um, compare yourself to a group of peers at a presentation at a conference like this. So um, thank you for including that in the, the planning for Charleston, because we were really happy to, to see that. And I think our presentation is really gonna um, really discuss our, our experiences in library school and how we have been able to translate them successfully, or maybe not successfully, <laughs> to our our first job and what we, you know, what we gained, what we wish we could have gotten out of library school. And we're, we're sort of hoping that this is, um, that this will be uh, interesting for people who are trying to, you know, get the most out of their library science degree and then translate those experiences to ones that they can um, convey in a job application or an interview as they begin to enter the workforce. And Georgia, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about the collection development focus of our presentation. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, I also wanted to say this is my first time presenting any conference, so I'm excited that and happy. Like, really thankful that Charleston um, accepted our proposal and that there was this stream for for people to share um, that are new to the profession. But yeah, I think also in terms of collection development, kind of thinking about like Maggie said, like what we maybe what we learned or what we wanted to know in terms of how we approach collection development um, going into your first career and also kind of giving some thoughts to um, heads of departments or people accepting new employees into their department and how they can share skills in terms of collection development because it can be a tricky area and there's so many different levels to collection development. There's and now with e-resources and um, contracts and everything going on and then what what happens when you have budgetary issues, especially now, which I'm sure many places have been struggling with as a result of the pandemic come coming back from that how it may be what may be useful to new librarians who are entering and how they can um apply what they've already learned but also how we can how people can help guide them in the process of of um moving through these areas that may be unexpected um area in times of social upheaval and anything like that so i think that's what we want to discuss primarily I'm really looking forward to it. I'm very much hoping to um, attend, although my schedule is starting to look like a swamp already. But I can tell you that uh, Charleston is, is such a friendly crowd and very, very warm and supportive attendees. Um, I, you know, was nervous before my first presentation there and ended up feeling very relaxed when I saw so many smiling, nodding faces and, and people commiserating with me immediately in the audience. So it's also nice to get that kind of, a, you know, we're not alone feeling. Uh, so speaking of, you know, library science degrees, there's a lot of chatter professionally, I'd say in particular, even just over the past like five years or so about the value of the MLS or MLIS degree. And a lot of people have very strong feelings about, um, you know, whether or not this, this is something that still has value or is, um, you know, perhaps it's time for an overhaul. But um, having had this experience so recently, what would be just one greatest hit piece of advice that you would give to some or guidance that you would give to someone considering entering library school? Oh, that's a, that's a big question. Um, I guess if I had to choose one piece of advice, if you I mean, it's a very, very specialized and a very specific degree. So you're you're likely only going to use this degree for a certain certain category of jobs and that you would only pursue this degree if you know you want the job that's on the other end of that. So if you're you're thinking about applying, my advice would be to to look at job postings for the kind of jobs that you want and you know look at what their what these job postings are what their requirements are and then really be strategic about what you can do over the course of your time in you know in a library science program to make sure that you're sort of checking each of these boxes so things like experience in instruction or experience with um certain databases experiences in community outreach things like that and then you know really being strategic about sort of answering each one of those job requirements during your time in library library school so at least you have some sort of experience or point to draw from for each one of those categories that you would be asked to have experience in as you're you know entering the job market so that would be my advice Makes total sense to me. <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah, I would say, yeah, it is very, I'm one of those people who actually doesn't have a strong opinion on this. I really don't know yet. I've been trying to think about it. Um, mm -hmm. My opinion about this um, conflict, I guess people are having is, but yeah, I think it is important to make sure that you are going into it, knowing that there's a likely a financial commitment at some level um, and also a time commitment. And you want to make sure that in the end, it, it was worth depending on what type of job you want to go into. So there are, you know, um, an MLS degree can also be useful for people who are interested in museums and other types of archival work as well. So not necessarily only libraries in specific, but yeah, so going through the job uh, descriptions and seeing, do I have any other background um, that can kind of like supplement instead, or is it really, really required that I have to go through the degree and making sure it's worth it? Um, I would say also just 
having, if you can, which I know can be difficult, if you know you want to work in a certain type of library, if you can look at like some type of part-time job or some type of experience beforehand and just knowing ahead of time, okay, I actually thrive in this environment. It's something I enjoy. Um, if I know that's kind of difficult, especially for people who may be transitioning from another career and they don't have that time or um, financial room to spend on something else like that. But if possible, just trying to find a way that you can get some experience or at least talk to people in those professions and based on what they say, get some kind of certainty or idea of what you, if you may enjoy it. Um, because yeah, like we've been saying, it is, it is a big commitment and you want to make sure it actually is worth it and for you. So I would say experience. I'm so glad that you mentioned the financial element. I think that's a piece that we don't talk about enough and that we don't um, illuminate enough and bring into the light. And then it's something that can come as a, an unfortunate surprise, um, you know, later in your life down, down the road. So is this going to be both of your first times attending the Charleston conference? You've been before Maggie. Uh, I went virtually last year, so I don't know if that if that totally counts as attending. But oh, that I, definitely counts. So this will be your first time on the ground, though. Yes, um, first time in Charleston. Awesome, I'm awesome. Excited. What are you each looking forward to the most about being there? Oh gosh, it doesn't have to be work. It could be like oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Um, I think. Uh, so I'm a big runner. I love running and I'm always excited to run in new places I visit. And it seems like Charleston is really gorgeous and will be a great place for running in the morning before going to the conference. And I've also heard a lot about the uh, the food scene in Charleston. So that seems really appealing. So, you know, of course, I'm excited for all the presentations, but I think it will be a fun place to spend a couple of days. I think you're setting yourself up for success because, you know, maybe like plan on eating a lot and then <laughs> running a lot <laughs> off to all of it. Um, yeah, it's great for walking and running. I love to take a run down um, by the, the battery park, the kind of, you know, it's, it's shaped like almost like a little peninsula dangling out and um, down in the southern tip. It's just this lovely waterfront park and you can run right along and look at all these beautiful historic homes and cool. then go, go eat all day. <laughs> what about you, Georgia? Yeah, I think um, I've heard a lot about both Charleston and the Charleston Conference, but Charleston just seems beautiful, like so many things to do and historic homes, like you said, and just the scenery. So I'm just excited to just go somewhere new, especially this time of year, I think is a nice time to travel, like perfect weather before it gets cold, depending where you're from. So um, I'm excited for that, but also in terms of Charleston Conference, everyone says it's a really like amazing experience. There's lots of nice programming, even outside of presentations. Of course, I'm excited for presentations, but um, the chance to just get to know people from other libraries and see what everyone's talking about. Um, yeah, I'm excited for that too. It's a great way to get to know people and forge, you know, I have people who the only time I see them is once a year at Charleston and I get really excited to see them every year because it's not so big. It's not um, like ALA where you kind of feel like, you know, you're at the LaGuardia airport for your conference. It, it feels more like you're, you're actually in a community of people who you see quite a lot throughout the week. And it's, um, yeah, it's also just a, a lovely place to spend a few days. I have taken family before with me because it is so beautiful in the historic district there. And it feels like a little mini vacation. So it's, and uh, you're right about the weather here in Florida, we get excited because it's like 10 degrees cooler <laughs> when we go up there and it's not so hot, uh, but it's good. I think it's going to be beautiful. So uh, taking things in a fun direction, what do y'all like to do for fun when you're not being librarians? Ooh, well, I mean, I love running. I ran in um, an undergrad for the University of Vermont I still still run and train at a pretty high level. So running's a big hobby. And within the past year, I've been getting a lot more into biking. And I actually just got a gravel bike earlier this fall. And it's been just so much fun to ride, um, ride gravel in like the Roth Rock State Forest and Black Moshannon um, near us. So central Pennsylvania is a really good place to ride gravel on all these like, you know, back roads and these forest roads. So um, really, really been excited by picking up that new hobby. Nice. Yeah. Um, I have a problem that like, I like hobby jump a lot. My new hobbies that are really consistent are 
reading and Pilates. Those are always there. But right now I'm like got really super into great British baking show. So all I feel like doing is baking things. <laughs> so that's basically all I do on my free time is try to like bake things in less case, well, unless it takes like too long and then I probably won't do it. But it takes like more than a couple hours. But anyway, that's my current hobby is trying to bake stuff and pretend I'm as good as those people, which I'm not. But Anyway. Oh man, that's so fun. <laughs> My mom and I are huge British, great British baking fans. I'm loving this new season so much. Totally on team Yanush. Like, oh my gosh. Okay. I, got so excited. I don't even get me started on these things. <laughs> I, yeah, I love it. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm also, a, I love to cook, but I'm not much of a baker. So, but I'll, I'll watch that show. And the thing is I have to have baked goods to eat while I'm watching it. There's no way I can just sit there and watch it and not stuff my face. Yeah. Speaking of reading, what's the best book you have each read this year? Um, you know, Georgette and I were saying that this was the question we were the most nervous about. <laughs> you know, to answer this question in front of a, a room of librarians feels like a lot of pressure. I promise it's not a personality <laughs> test or anything, you know, at <laughs> all. Well, well, in that case, I'll, I'll stick with my theme of running. Uh, one of the best books I read this year was called How She Did It by Molly Huddle and Sarah Slattery. They're two professional runners. Um, and the book is a series of interviews with other professional and high profile female um, female runners. And it's just been really, really cool to see, see these, like, these women perform at such a high level, you know, people who have won the Olympics, won Boston Marathon, won all these just amazing, um, amazing running events talk about just in their own words, how they got to where they are. So that was, that was really a highlight for me this year is to read that book. Awesome. Nice. Um, I was to know if I was I'm a big fantasy genre person I really wish I could get into nonfiction books but it's not my not my vibe unfortunately maybe one day but um yeah so I think one book that I'm currently reading that I really like and maybe my favorite of the year so far is called Babel by Arif Quang and she for anyone who knows fantasy she wrote a series called The Poppy Wars which is pretty popular um and she's just a very enticing writer she's a young author I'm pretty sure and she recently started getting into uh novel writing so that's um really nice book that I've been interested in and liking so far yeah it's I was trying to I was trying to think about this question and trying to think I don't know I I, <laughs> I also it's also difficult for me because like I'm not picky with books I just feel like I like everything more so then it's difficult to pick a best one but I'll just say the one I'm currently reading hey I'm a I am a number one proponent of read what you like you know I I go anywhere from polar exploration nonfiction to fantasy to you know, Nancy Drew, like I'm all over the place. Um, so yeah, I think reading is just such a joy and life's too short to read a bunch of stuff you don't feel like reading. <laughs> I like to read what I like to. And Georgette, we'll have to uh, talk some fantasy fiction because <laughs> I've gotten a little bit more into it over the last few years also. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's like that thing where you read so much for school or like for a degree or something and then I just had to get away from like anything related to those subjects for a bit, like from in my personal life and just jump into something I'm completely I know nothing about. So, yeah. Yeah. I know I've, I've, uh, I really admire a lot of people in the profession who seem like they're always reading professional books. And I, you know, it's not like I never read anything in the library literature, but when I'm going to sit down in the evening and enjoy you know, my cat's in my lap and I'm having a cup of tea and I'm reading my book. I'm not, I'm going to be picking something that I want to read that is like yeah. fully escapism or a story, or, you know, I'm not going home and reading library literature all night. And I don't <laughs> think there's anything wrong with that. So uh, when I first started this, um, being a part of this interview series, I was interviewed back in 2014 um, in my first librarian position. And the gentleman, uh, Tom Gilson, who was running the interviews at that time, he always ended all the interviews with the same question. And that is, is there anything that you wish that I had asked that I didn't? Oof. Um, I think something that, you know, I don't want to speak for Georgette, but it's something that she and I have talked about a little bit is that we are really trying to approach every aspect of our roles as librarians with, you know, equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility in mind. And so we, you know, I think that the, the presentation that we are 
going to be giving at Charleston emphasizes that in different ways, especially when we're talking about, um, you know, the the job search process and how in some ways that was a challenge, but also a success for equity in hiring. And that's something that Georgette and I are also working on in some different projects and working groups uh, for the Penn State University Libraries. So I think, you know, I'm I'm glad that we had the chance to touch on that in some of our earlier answers, but I also, you know, with this um, this time now, want to emphasize that we are really in a position of like always continuing to learn and also finding ourselves as emerging leaders in this area, I think uh, within our university and then also within the profession. So that's something that, you know, I'm really trying to, to think about in my professional, um, you know, publications and my research and my scholarship and my uh, service commitments to the university, and then also in my, my teaching and my instruction and my research support. So I think, um, yeah, I'm glad that we had the chance to talk about it a little bit. And I think we'll be talking about it more in our presentation. Don't want to give away too much, but that is something that I think we're really trying to approach the profession with that in mind as we you know, grow our careers. Oh, thanks, Maggie. Yeah, I honestly couldn't have said it better because that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about it earlier. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about it earlier. And um, I think, yeah, like like Maggie mentioned, we're on a couple of different projects together that discuss these DEI values and also always just bringing it into your own work somehow, um, particularly with teaching is something that I would like to focus on um, personally and how I can incorporate that more into the classroom events and everything like that. So I think, yeah, that is the one I would just say basically the same exact thing. I just said a lot better than me. So I'll end it there. But that was the other topic. <laughs> no, that's great. Well, this has been terrific, y'all. I'm I'm really looking forward to getting to know you more and hope to uh, be able to come to your presentation in Charleston and chat a bit. But also, I'm so glad that you were uh, keen on joining me for this interview. I love highlighting emerging voices, and um, I feel like our profession is in good hands for the future if, if everyone is as um, engaged and committed and also as empathetic as y'all. So thank you so much for joining us today.